All right, welcome back, guys. We are on episode four, if my first intro didn't work. So we were gonna use this header. Well, we still are. This header, we paid $250 for it. It's just an eBay header we bought locally. So we'll add that to the budget. Unfortunately, I don't know what the budget is off my head, but it's up on the screen right now, scrolling through. So to run this race header, we have to run the EM2 uh, sway bar because I guess that uh, is what people with RSXs do. They run the EM2 sway bar when they swap to a race header. So we gotta make sure we keep the sway bar. In today's episode, we are gonna drop this K-frame, get that K-frame and motor and transmission in this bay. When we do that, we then can weld these factory mounts that we drilled out of the RSX in the proper location, bolt them in, weld them up, so I can start doing body work to this engine bay. So, oh, like I've seen before, they're literally just sitting in spot. Realistically, guys, if money wasn't a big thing, you could literally just buy a set of hand sport mounts and not worry about this. But I'm cheap. That's why I zoomed on Chris's face, because I knew he'd do something <laughs> stupid. Um, not only am I cheap, I'm very resourceful, which means I had RSXs that I junked that cost me nothing in the long run. So hence the RSX mounts. So let's get this drop down in spot and then we will get that K24A2 up in spot, which technically, if anything, don't mind the mess of the garage, we should be on that hoist. That'd be the logical thing, yes. No one asked you. This is why I don't pay you. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that, Chris didn't want to do it on the hoist. He said it was easier to do on the ground. So let me just stand correct it. And oh. the camera's now on me, yeah, so they can't opinion. see you. Who asked your opinion? <laughs> the camera asked for my opinion. So we are going to get this up in the air, guys. And we're going to drop this. We're just doing the struts now. And then we're going to continue with getting this in spot. A little update on the Ute trailer. If you guys don't know, we did sell the motor out of this. So um, let's see here. No motor. So I'm hoping to sell the front end. If the front end goes, great. Uh, but between the motor and the cluster, this car cost me zero dollars. And since it cost me zero dollars, we're gonna start building that into the Ute trailer. And we're gonna probably cut it somewhere around here, weld this door up, weld that door up, cut the roof off, make it match my Ute. So that's another project, another day. Not gracefully. Yeah. That's the one we gotta worry about gracefully. That's that one there. Need to go that way. That might just clear. That was not. I wanna roll it all. Roll it this way. There you go. And then push it. We have the motor in place and thankfully the RBC is not staying on this anyways, but that is, you couldn't even see if you tried. Doesn't make any sense. Go that way? That way this way? I'd say that way. 
Come right there. There he goes. Up here now. So that one. Right about there. Yeah, make sure the bolts line up with this. That's the problem. You gotta that, make sure. Have the lines up with that. Oh, we should put the bolts in it. Well, right up there. Which one's which? I don't know. Well, what we find out. And then working on getting the mounts on, like you've seen in the last time we were doing this. So we have two jacks to level off this motor. Chris is bolting that mount up. And what we're going to end up doing is getting it ready to weld. But we got to make sure the transmission side's ready as well. So we're just tightening everything up. So you can see we got it prepped. We're going to obviously have to push down on that. It actually fits pretty good there. All the bolts clear like it's supposed to. Once the mount's welded up, we're going to drop the K-frame. Then we're going to fix the tear of the metal from taking the old one out because I didn't drill it all the way through. And then we're going to fix that as well. So we got to take that off first, Chris. We got to take that, just take the center bolt out, lift it up so we can grind where the green marks are so we know where to weld, right? So you've seen that we got this prepped. So Chris is going to push it down some. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tacking it up, welding this mount in spot. It looks like we have the transmission and motor side up together to where it should be. So, and the K-frame's bolted up and the rear mount, everything's what it should be, the way it should be mounted in an RSX. So it should work with this car fairly easily. Pass me that hammer. How about we put the ground somewhere that's grounded? That don't mean nothing. this mount because we need to get down in there and we can't with the motor in spot i did put that little triangle on like i was talking about before i'll grind that out nice and smooth put some fill clean that up but it is welded there and i thought it was a good idea to stitch right along those two spots i'll run some seam sealer down to where you see where the factory seam sealer is and i'll tie it all in after i'm done cleaning that up now we're off to the passenger side yeah because you won't push it against the frame rail. it's against the frame rail that. Not enough. No, no, it's not cleaned up enough. That's my issue. Uh -huh. We gotta take it off, I think. So we got that tacked up for now, just like we did this side. Chris is just marking off the spot that we're gonna put a nut in the frame rail because the transmission mount has like uh, one bolt up, two bolts down, and they would go in the frame rail, which this car doesn't. So we're gonna have to mark it, drill two holes, weld up two nuts, and that way we can have the uh, mount side uh, removable like it is from factory and actually fastened. As you see, it's just a quick couple tacks. Um, it will all be cleaned up at the end anyways. But now we need to get it out so we can weld up the bottom parts and clean up this engine bay and, yeah, have some fun. For anyone that's thinking, this is just body metal. So, like, you literally are burning through it quite easily. You can see there that those are penetrations. So we know that we got good penetration. And that's the tear from the old mount. So what I plan on doing is grinding that up anyways. I'm probably going to put a piece of metal here, weld it from the top. So I'll use that as a backing plate. So I don't have to try to weld up that uh, the torn metal, which will just burn away i want good penetration so if i clean that up and put uh, a piece of body metal there and then i'll clean this up and i'll re-bed line in here so it's like factory and no one will know the difference other than if you watch a youtube channel so chris took the jack off 
and the jack and everything's sitting the way it is. Again, we're not keeping the RBC, so we're not too concerned about right there. I was thinking about cutting that out because we're going to be painting this whole engine bay. And I figured maybe for the next person, because I'm going to sell this car. Um, but, you know, I think the next person can worry about it, not me. So now it's time to uh, drop this motor and transmission and K-frame out of this engine bay. So tomorrow I can finish welding it up on top of making carbon fiber molds. I did say carbon fiber molds. They're fiberglass molds for carbon fiber parts, which is a whole different series. Uh, link up in the right-hand corner if it drops before this car drops. Who knows? So it actually came down way easier than I thought. So we are going to get rid of the AC lines because we're not running AC. We're going to get rid of the power steering lines because we're not running power steering. And then I'm going to clean up the engine bay. We still need to get this on the ground slid out of way because, well, I need to get inside there to prep, clean all this and do a lot of body work, grind all down all my spot welds. I need to spot weld those four right there and the one right there. And then this mount is in spot. It's pretty well there now. Chris is drilling the spots that you'll see right down there for that mount. That way we can get two nuts welded in there. And then we now have a K-Series uh, EM2.